Linear stability theory tells us if a flow is stable or unstable. It does, however, not tell us if the disturbance can grow at one station or if it needs to be convected downstream in order to grow. If we consider parallel flow, the concept of convective and absolute instabilities describes discompetition between dispersion and attraction. In the first example, we induce a disturbance delta to the flow at a station x1. As time propagates, the output g will be located at a more downstream location x2. This process continues and eventually g will become infinity between the two black rays in this diagram. This is the general requirement of a time asymptotic flow from linear stability theory. In particular, this flow is called convectively unstable if g becomes 0 for x over t equals 0. For a parallel flow application, we can think of a yz plane at x1, which contains our initial disturbance. The same plane at x2 will then contain a larger disturbance. Such a system is called an amplifier because it requires an initial disturbance, which is then amplified to infinity in theory and nonlinear saturation in reality. For a different flow, we induce the disturbance delta again and observe the output g. In this case, g becomes infinity for the special case x over t equals 0. In a plane perpendicular to the flow direction x, the initial disturbance at the t1 time therefore remains at the same location and grows without being convected downstream. As a result, the instability of such flows cannot be stopped once the absolute instability started. Convection is simply too weak to carry the instability away from its origin. The previous instabilities are local properties of flow and therefore only valid for parallel or weakly non-parallel flows. In other words, the flow profiles of such flows changes only little or not at all in downstream direction. The first case here shows the effect of a shear layer from two different parallel velocities. The Kelvin-Helmholtz type of instability in the box is a typical case of convective instabilities where the shear layer acts as an amplifier of selective frequencies. If we add a little body within this shear layer, pressure waves may develop and travel in all directions, in particular towards the origin of the instability. If the distance of the two bodies is correctly chosen, a hydroacoustic feedback occurs. Pressure waves ignite vorticity waves, and vorticity waves ignite pressure waves. The feedback loop is then complete. A different case is the last one. Here a pocket of absolute instability forms in the recirculation zone of a circular body. Disturbances can travel upstream towards the element, but also downstream to the far wake. In reality, such systems are said to be self-sustaining through a nonlinear interaction of both upstream and downstream traveling waves. The von Kármán vortex street is the most prominent example of this mechanism, which may be called hydrodynamic resonance. Both of these mechanisms can be called globally unstable. Please note that only the last mechanism can be captured by linear stability theory and is fundamentally different from both convective instability and hydroacoustic modes.